Okay. So in this video, we're going to look at resolving the horizontal and vertical components of a force. So when a force acts on a particle at an angle to the horizontal on a smooth flat plane, it can be split into two perpendicular components, the horizontal and the vertical. Resolving the force into these components simplifies the analysis of its effect on the particle. The horizontal component, which we'll call FH, is the part of the force responsible for moving the particle along the plane. And the vertical component, which we'll call FV, represents the portion of the force pushing the particle into the plane, or trying to lift it off if the force were in opposing direction. Throughout this video, we're going to work through three or four examples to demonstrate this idea. Okay, so in example one, we've been asked to find the horizontal and vertical components of each force. And we're told that a force of 10 newtons acts at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal on a particle situated on a smooth plane. So the first thing we're going to do is to sketch this as a diagram. So because we're told the plane is smooth, this means there's no friction. And we have our force of 10 newtons applied at 30 degrees to the horizontal. And the blue arrow here is our horizontal component of the force. And this blue arrow pointing upwards is a vertical component. Because you can see the green force, the 10 newtons, is acting in this direction and in this direction. So to work out the horizontal component, we can think of this as a right angle triangle, where you've got the horizontal force, we've got the angle of 30 degrees, and then we've got an opposite side here. So I'll sketch this as a right angle triangle. So we can think of this horizontal force as the adjacent side of this right angle triangle. And because it's the adjacent, and we've got the angle and the hypotenuse, we can use cos. So the cos of the angle 30 will be the adjacent half h over the hypotenuse, which is 10. So the horizontal component will be 10 cos 30. And we can work this out on our calculators and we get five root three newtons. So this 10 newtons has a horizontal force parallel to the plane of five root three newtons. And we can use a similar idea to work out a vertical component and I will say FV. This is the opposite in our right angle triangle. So we'll use sine. So this will be 10 times the sine of the angle 30, which works out as 5 newtons. So again, this 10 newtons has a 5 newton force acting vertically upwards. Okay? So this is how you work out the horizontal and the vertical components of a force acting at an incline to the plane. So perhaps you want to try and work out the horizontal and vertical components for question B, where we're told that a force of 20 newtons acts at an angle of 60 degrees to the horizontal, again, on a smooth flat plane. You can pause the video, and when you come back, we'll go through the work solution. Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So we'll begin by trying to work out the horizontal component and this will be the adjacent side of a right angle triangle. We can draw a dash line down here. So FH will be the cos of the angle 60. That will be the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse of 20. So the horizontal component will be 20 cos 60. And this works out to be 10 newtons. The vertical component, FB, when this will be the opposite side, so we'll use sine. So the sine of 60 will be F of V divided by the hypotenuse 20. So FV will be 20 sine 60, which is 10 root 3 newtons. Okay, let's move on to example 2. Okay, so in example two, we're told that two forces act on a particle as shown. And we've been asked to work out the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force. Okay, so there's lots of ways we can attempt this. We could work out the vertical and the horizontal components like we did previously. But I want to show you another way. And this involves finding the resultant force of this six and this 10 newtons. 
if we have our particle and then we have a 10 newtons force acting in this direction when this angle is 45 degrees to the horizontal plane then this 6 newtons we know is acting in this direction so rather than having it acting on the particle it's exactly the same if we have it here I'm just going to pull this down to make more space so this will be 6 newtons and this magnitude will be 10 newtons the resultant force will be the one we're showing in green here so this will be the resultant force of these two forces and now we've created a triangle and we know this angle which is 6 newtons at an angle of 30 to the plane where we can work out an angle in our triangle by thinking about angles in parallel lines we know this is 30 this one and this one are vertically opposite so this will be 45 so now we've got corresponding angles this 75 degree angle will be the same as this angle here so now we can use the formulae for triangles to work out the resultant force so I'm just going to sketch this triangle separately and we'll label this as FR, the resultant force of the 6 and the 10 newtons. Okay, so now we've got this triangle, we can use the cosine rule to find this resultant force. So FR squared will be equal to 10 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 lots of 10 times 6 times the cosine of 75. We can work out the right hand side on our calculator so fr squared will be 104.9 we'll take the square root of both sides so therefore fr the resultant force will, will be approximately 10.24 newtons so we can label this on our diagram we'll say 10.24 but now we need to work out this angle here which is the same as this one I'm just going to label this as 10.24 as well. Okay, so now we can use the sine rule because we've got a matching pair of angle and length. And if we work out theta, this will be this angle here. All we need to do is add this angle theta to this 45 and then you've got the direction of this resultant force. So theta then will be sine theta using the sine rule over its opposite length 6 that will be exactly the same as the sine of 75 over its opposite length, 10.24. We'll move this 6 to the right hand side. So sine theta will be 6 sine 75 over 10.24. We can work this out and then we'll take the arc sine. So theta will be 34.5 degrees. But this is this angle. What we wanted was this angle. So the direction then will be 34.5 degrees plus the 45 degrees. So this gives us 79.5 degrees and a and the resultant force of 10.24 newtons. Okay? Let's try one more example. Okay, so in example three, we're given that three forces act on a particle that is in equilibrium. And we've been asked to work out the values of P, which is this force here, and Q, which is this angle. So perhaps you want to try this question yourself. You can pause the video, and when you come back, we'll go through the work solution. Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at resolving the vertical forces. So if we label these on our diagram, we'll have the vertical component from this 12 newtons acting upwards. This will be the sine, because it's the opposite of the angle. So 12 sine 50. You can see this 8 newtons is also acting upwards, or have a vertical, vertically upwards component. 
And again, this is the opposite, so it'll be the sine. So eight sine of the angle 20. And then this Q is acting vertically downwards. So we'll draw this here. And this will be P sine of the angle Q. And because we're told it's in equilibrium, these forces will balance. So the upward force, eight sine 20 plus 12 sine 50, will be exactly the same as P sine Q. We can work this out on our calculators and we get approximately 6.456 Newtons is equal to P sine Q. I'm going to call this equation one. Because we've got two unknowns, P and Q, I'm going to need two equations. But now we can resolve the horizontal components. So we can see this 12 Newtons is acting to the right. So because this is the adjacent, it will be 12 cos 50. And this 8 Newtons is acting to the left. And this will be 8 cos 20. And this force P is also acting to the left. So this will go in this direction, P cos Q. And again, we're told it's in equilibrium, so the horizontal forces will balance. So we'll have 8 cos 20 plus P cos Q will equal 12 cos 50. So the forces acting to the right are equal to the forces acting to the left. We can move this 8 cos 20 to the right hand side, and then we can work out this on our calculator. So P cos Q will equal 0.196 and we'll call this equation 2. Okay, so we've got P sine Q and P cos Q. If we were to divide equation 1 by equation 2, well, we'll have P sine Q over P cos Q will equal 6.456 over 0.196. These P's will cancel and sine divided by cos is tan. So we have tan Q will equal 32.9. We'll take the arc tan of both sides. So Q will equal the arc tan of 32.9. So Q will be 86 degrees. And now that we know Q, we can substitute this into equation 2 or equation 1 to work out P. If I substitute it into equation 2, then we'll have P cos Q 86 will equal 0.196. We'll divide both sides by the cos of 86. So P will be 0.196 over cos of 86. We can work this out on our calculators. And this gives us 6.46 newtons. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the full lesson and worksheet from my website, mrmathematics.com. There's a link in the description below. Thanks again and take care.